what I want to present here quite quickly is uh, what Karl Popper has to say about Boscovich's theory and the relevant book is uh, as you can read it it's uh, Quantum Theory and the Schism in Physics Carl Popper, and it's from the postscript to the logic of scientific discovery. I'll move it over a bit more. So I can do a search for him. Oh, here we go. Search Boscovich. Here we go. If we go back to this bit here, I'm only highlighting a few things that are being said, and this is only in relation to Boscovich. So, so what we're getting to is what we've been talking about is Descartes earlier, and so much for the doctrine of point automatism, all of monads, which grew out of Leibniz's criticism of the Cartesian theory of matter. So what we're talking about is a theory of matter, and it's uh, based on point automatism. His doctrine is clearly metaphysical, and it gives rise to a metaphysical research program that of explaining the Cartesian extension of bodies with the help of the theory of forces. And next he's going to get to say about uh, Boscovich. The programme was carried out in detail by Boscovich, who was partly anticipated by Kant. The contributions of Kant and Boscovich will perhaps be better appreciated if I first say a few words about automatism in its relation to Newton's dynamics. And uh, if you excuse me, I'm going to pass over that point, point out it's carrying on from the idea of democracies about uh, having a theory of particles. Here, here we go, a bit more things about Boscovich here. Uh, Boscovich's uh, Theory, Philosophy, Naturalist, uh, Theory and Natural Philosophy, that's a book, was first published in 1758 in Vienna. Kant's monologue, uh, the Physica, in 1758, no, 1756, sorry, in Konigsberg. Uh, 30 years later, Kant repudiated part of his um, monadology in his Metaphysical Foundations of Natural Science, 1786. Though the essential idea of Boscovich's monology is to be found in Kant, uh, in those places, blah, 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 uh, proposition f 4 and 5 for the finite number of discrete monads present in finite bodies, and proposition uh, 10 for the central forces, which are attracted over large, long distances and pulses over short distances, and for Kant's explanation of extension, uh, Kant's work is extremely sketchy as compared with Boscovich's. So Boscovich had a much more thorough theory. So when uh, Kant decides not to believe in his sketchy theory, it's not really that relevant. So let's get on to the next bit. There is another development almost equally important of the Cartesian theory of matter and of Leibniz's program of a dynamic explanation of matter. While the Kant Boscovich theory, Kant and Boscovich had much the same theory, anticipates in rough outline the modern theory of extended matter as composed of elementary particles invested with repulsive and attractive forces, this second development is the direct forerunner of the Faraday Maxwell theory of fields. So what you get is a sort of development of that to Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism and where you've got uh, electric and magnetic fields.
is as say quite a few other things. It is important to realise that Boscovitz forces are not to be identified by Newtonian forces. They are not equal to acceleration multiplied by mass, but equal to acceleration multiplied by pure number, the number of monads. The point has been clarified by L. L. White in a very interesting note in Nature's uh, 179 in the year 1957 on page 284. White stresses the kinematic aspects of Boscovich's theory as opposed to its dynamic aspects in the sense of Newtonian dynamics. It seems to me that White's comments on Boscovich's critics are correct. I may perhaps express this by saying that Boscovich gives an explanatory theory not only of extension and gravity but also of Newtonian inertial mass. On the other hand, although Boscovich's forces are as White rightly stresses from a formal or dimensional point of view, accelerations, they are from a physical, from an intuitive and from a metaphysical point of view forces, very much like those of Newton, i.e. you can interpret them as Newton forces in that way if you want to. It's uh, I, Boscovich is doing it in a certain way, but it's sort of like it can be equated to how Newton is doing with forces. They are dispositions existing in their own right. They are the causes and determine accelerations. Uh, so Kant, on the other hand, thinks in purely Newtonian terms and he attributes inertia to his monads. See his proposition uh, 11. So, if I said any more. No, it's not. That is basically, I think, what's most obviously there. So what we have, what we have is uh, Popper mentioning uh, Boscovich's theory, pointing out it is a metaphysical theory or physics, and it's built upon uh, what Newton was talking about. And it's led to the field theory of electromagnetism of Maxwell. And actually, you've got uh, Boscovich dealing with force. It can be treated in the Newtonian way of dealing with force. And it is a unified force. And it can, when he's talking about his point particles, his point particles have a um, sphere of influence around them which can be thought of as a field. So you've got a field of force around a point particle and it's a unified force. So that's what we have from Boscovich. And it's a theory that should be more emphasised in the teaching of uh, physics students. It should be pointed out to them that there is a unified field theory in the 18th century, but they seem to want to ignore that. There's so many other things they got to teach them that they want to miss out that. Plus there seems to be a bit of a prejudice against metaphysics. So there we go. Another example of somebody talking about Boscovich's theory.